What's going on everyone? It's Ryan Drew and here's another brush inking demonstration of an illustration by Jack Kirby of the Silver Surfer. This had a lot of stuff going on in this drawing, but I am very pleased with the results and overall it was really fun to ink. So let's get into this and I'll show you how I did it. I've been using this kind of paper that you can print through the printer, no problem. It's got a little bit lighter front side than on the back. It's a thicker paper, car not cardstock, but it goes through pretty well and it prints a colored version of the inks pretty well on the front there. I've been using the Winsor Newton size one Galinsky Sable brush for this. Better for letter page size, I think. It gives you enough detail and enough ink without too much ink at one time. Very good. I'm using this Tachikawa G pen nib and pen holder. It comes in very handy for background work where I'm really trying to be very precise with the lines. I'm still using the Speedball Super Black India ink for these. It's very trusty and dependable. It dries pretty quickly with a brush and it dries pretty dark. I've got a little shot glass that I pour my ink into and then I use this to ink and dip the brush into while I'm going. A jar of water that I will use to clean my brush out every once in a while because ink will build up in the brush. And I also have a little jar of pen cleaner, which is basically isopropyl alcohol. I use this to clean out my pen nib every once in a while so that the ink doesn't build up on the pen nib and get that all messed up. You want to be cleaning out your brush with water every once in a while when you switch back and forth between pen and brush. You just don't want the ink to dry on your brush. And again, I'll just pour out the ink I need into this little shot glass and use it as I'm going. I've also got this artist glove that I use to protect my hand from getting any ink smudges on it and also just to make it easier for my hand to slide across the paper as I'm inking. It just makes a better experience than to just do it without a glove. That's what I found. I like to do a little bit of a warm up before I start inking. So I will work on practicing my line work and just feathering techniques and just getting used to using the brush. You want to use the tip of the brush. That is the trick with a brush. You don't want to be smashing down on the belly of the brush, I guess it's called. You want to be focused in on using the tip of the brush as much as possible. That's what's going to get you the crisp lines in your artwork. So practice this for about five or 10 minutes before you start. You can see I'm using different techniques here, just practicing on getting very consistent lines, parallel lines, feathering techniques, circles, things like that, thick to thin. You just want to warm up before you start going. So let's start here. What I usually do is what's called tapering the brush. Again, you dip the ink in and you want to get enough ink in your brush, but you also want to get the excess off and you'll go thick to thin to try to get that nice pointy brush so that you can start using the tip as you ink. I like to start at the head. I want to focus on getting the character's emotion, his face first. You want to nail that down as soon as possible because it would not be great to do the whole piece and then try to do the face and then mess the face up. Mess up early, I guess, is the idea. But really try to nail that emotion first, the character's face first. I'll do the face, I will do that completely first, and then I will go through and do the contour around the character's body, and then I'll go and do inside lines, and then I'll do like the large areas of ink and shadow inside of the character. The challenge here really is to do a very crisp, solid, continuous line on the contours. A lot of Jack Kirby's pencils are very tight, especially this drawing. So you want to ink it very tight. You want to ink it very smooth. You want to interpret that line as much as possible. So my goal, my practice here is to use the most continuous, smooth line as possible that I can get. 
That's why it's so important to taper your brush. Make sure that you got just the right amount of ink on there so you're not mashing down too much ink at one time and you get a really nice balance between thick and thin as you're inking in the line. The Silver Surfer was created by Jack Kirby for his run on the Fantastic Four series in the 60s with Stan Lee. He was introduced in 1966 in a series alongside of Galactus, and Silver Surfer is kind of like this scout or herald angel messenger, basically, of Galactus, who goes ahead and scouts out planets for Galactus to eat and consume, because Galactus is a giant planet-eating godlike entity out in outer space. So he shows up on Earth and then is quickly confronted by the Fantastic Four who convince him not to have Galactus eat the Earth and he has to rebel against Galactic basically. They fight against him and ultimately Galactus confines him to the Earth so he can't leave. Uh, that's the original storyline where he was created. I thought it'd be really cool to do this, not only because you guys voted on the poll that I did to ink this character, but I thought it was cool to look into the origins of this character and why Jack Kirby even created him from the beginning. So in an interview that I found on YouTube, I think it's from the 80s, uh, Kirby says that he didn't want to come up with any more stereotype figures or characters. He wanted something completely new. So he says that for some reason, I went to the Bible and I came up with Galactus. And there I was in front of this tremendous figure who I knew very well because I've always felt him. I certainly couldn't treat him in the same way I could any ordinary mortal. And I remember my first story, I had to back away from him to resolve that story. The Silver Surfer is, of course, the Fallen Angel. When Galactus relegated him to Earth, he stayed on Earth, and that was the beginning of his adventures. So basically, Kirby went to the Bible, which is, I would say, the best place for us to get stories from. It's the best story there is. As a Christian, it is the best place to look for the archetypal story. And I think it's really interesting that Kirby went to the Bible to get his inspiration. He ultimately was looking for a mythological figure and a background for this character that, kind of in the same way of like Tolkien, he wanted to have something believable. So he, instead of trying to make up his own stereotypical figure, he pulled inspiration from the Bible and specifically he's pulling from Genesis, creation account in Genesis. So Galactus kind of becomes this stand-in for God creating the universe, creating the world, and he says that Silver Surfer is like his fallen angel. We know that in the Bible to be Lucifer, who's the fallen angel, which is obviously not a good guy in the story. He is the enemy of uh, the Bible, the enemy of our story. But Kirby took those that relationship between the creator figure and his messenger, his angel, and that's where you get Galactus and the Silver Surfer. I find this really funny because um, at the same time that he was pulling this inspiration for like this deep background, this deep mythos for the Silver Surfer and Galactus, he wanted to give it that like legitimacy. At the same time, in another interview, I read that the reason why he chose a surfboard is because he didn't want to draw spaceships anymore for his characters, like a kind of like a spaceship gimmick. So he was really inspired by people surfing, which is really becoming popular at the time in the 60s, living out in California and seeing a bunch of people surfing out there. So it's kind of funny that you've got, you know, both things going on. You got this deep lore that he's pulling from the Bible as his like basis for this mythology he's created for these characters. But then he also was like, well, I'll give him a surfboard. So he's like surfing around in space at the same time. Uh, th this is what makes for an iconic character. You've got to have this balance of deep background mythology and also something that's novel, something that kind of like pulls somebody into that, into that story with a new character. So there you go. There's the origin of the Silver Surfer. And I just thought it was a cool story to share. I'll try to put a link to that interview so you can watch that interview of how he talks about the origin.
Yes, Silver Surfer, he was a humanoid who was granted the power to become Silver Surfer by Galactus so that his planet wouldn't be eaten. He decided to become Galactus's herald. But I just thought it was really interesting that Kirby, you know, to come up with new ideas, he went to an ancient source. He went to the Bible to kind of bring something believable to his characters, and that's why they're iconic. He also says that this is what led to his creation of the new gods. It's this idea of like trying to interpret mythological figures and characters from the Bible and from other sources today. And that's what he was trying to do with that series as well. That's why these characters are more believable and have longer lasting power than just something that he simply made up on a weekend or something. It's like it's got more depth to it. And this is something that great storytellers like Tolkien and other people do when they go to create iconic characters. So this illustration, this image is split up between the foreground, which is the surfer on his board, and also this like path of light that he's traveling on. Uh, the silver surfer travels at super light speed, basically. And what he, what Kirby's doing here is making a distinction between the, the white of this path and the black background of space behind him. And that's where I'm going to switch over and start using pen to do the background. But I will do some of these objects like planets in the background first with a brush. It's just easier to knock them out really quick as I'm doing this contour line for some of these objects. At this point, I do switch over to pen. So like I said, I've got a jar of water that I'm gonna use to rinse my brush out and get as much as the ink out of it as I can before I switch over to pen. And you'll see here, I will start using my uh, Tachikawa G Pen nib to crank out these details and shading and hatch lines, as well as the Kirby Crackle. This pen comes in handy. It's a very good nib to use for drawing. It gives you a very consistent line. Uh, it lets you do thick to thin pretty well, but the selling point for me is like, it's a workhorse kind of a pen. It lets you do a very consistent line for shading and for contour that you want to have. I mean, my philosophy is you use a brush for human figures, for animals, for things that are alive. You use a pen nib more for objects that are stationary, that are inanimate objects. And they just give you that, they just give you more of a consistent line weight to them. So that is the reason why I decided to use this. It's just going to make your work go a lot faster, especially with all these different circles that you have to do. And you can use a circle guide. I didn't use a circle guide on this one. I just wanted to go ahead and crank it out. But it's definitely hard to ink with a brush to ink circles and have them be very crisp with a brush. So that's why I'm using the pen nib on this. Another thing I wanted to do was I wanted to ink the radial lines of these stars, these kind of like bursts and things. I wanted those lines to be what forms the outside edge of the image. Instead of drawing like a solid black rectangle all the way around, my challenge was to use those radial lines to form that edge. And when it's time for me to switch back over to inking with a brush, I will take my pen cleaner and I'll dip my pen nib into it, get it wet, get that alcohol on it, and then I'll rub it off on a paper towel and get that ink out of the pen nib. And then that's good to go. And then go ahead and ink back up and get ready to ink here with the brush now. So the Kirby Crackle is what I really want to do with this image. There are techniques that I've learned since making this video that probably make this a lot faster. You can see here, I am trying to just kind of like dab the ink into the paper with a brush point. 
I've seen that you can also use the back of the brush, the end of the handle. You can dip that in ink and just kind of like dab it, just dots everywhere on the page. And that's a faster way to do it. So next time I will try that method, I'll use the back of the brush to kind of dab into the ink and then dab it on the paper to get those different sizes of dots. The reason why I'm just going ahead and doing it with a brush point here is because I'm also kind of switching back and forth between filling in the large areas of black with ink and then also getting the dots next to those large areas of black. So it just made more sense for me to do it this way faster, but I'll try it the other way next time I do it. I wanted to mention that Kirby Crackle, these dots, Kirby invented, or he came up with this technique basically to show cosmic power, cosmic energy. And Kirby uses this technique for the first time, interestingly, in Fantastic Four number 48 from 1966, which is at the time they were, I guess they were printing pictures of quasars for the first time in the 60s in, in newspapers, according to this article in the Kirby Collector magazine. So their speculation is that Kirby saw these images that were being reproduced on newsprint because of like the dot screens and everything. It just looked like this splotchy mix of like white and black dots showing these things going on out in space. So is this where he got this from? It's possible. It's probably the most reasonable explanation, but I just think that it's really cool that the first appearance of the, the iconic Kirby Crackle is also the first appearance of the Silver Surfer. So it was a lot faster for me to use the brush to do this technique. Again, next time I'll try the end of the handle and see if that goes any faster. But it's just so so much quicker to, to fill everything in with a brush once you've done the basic contour work in the background here. And this composition is really cool. You've got so much going on here that just work together, despite all the different objects he's got going on in the background, but it, he, he separates them very well using these different techniques. He uses a lot of the background images, the dark solid shapes of the planets and things. He puts them right up against the shoulder or the head of Silver Surfer and it just kind of gets that nice contrast going. But then you also have that nice crisp white shape, the path of his board on top of the black splotchy dots of the Kirby Crackle and the galaxies and everything in the background. He's got like the lines going through the planets so it feels like it's set back in space. There feels like there's depth to this image. It's not just like a foreground image of him laid on top of the background. And then you've got like the planet up here in the foreground with the different shading hatching elements that give it this more detail that comes into focus. You have way more detail when you're closer in focus than if you do in the background. So it's like he's using all these different techniques to try to mimic what you would see like photographically or realistically, right? You would see more detail up close versus far away. What you're looking at is like what he was looking at when he was seeing these images in the newspapers and stuff. You're seeing the limits of what they could perceive at that time with cameras. He's trying to reproduce that on paper. So this is this is the magic of comics. This is what you can do with comics. Use these different techniques to suggest form and mass and different textures to just suggest different things. And if you do it well enough, like Kirby, then you can create an image that is iconic and also easily readable at the same time and it keeps you coming back keeps your eye moving around the page because there's always something new to find and explore of the silver surfer images that i could have inked this is the one i wanted to do and i'm glad i took the time to do it even though it took a while because i'm pleased with the results and it's just fun to kind of think of how to make an image like this for myself
And the last thing really to do here at the end is to sign his signature and I just put my name on there as Ryan Drew after Jack Kirby. And that's it. And there it is, guys. Silver Surfer by Jack Kirby, the Herald of Galactus, the Cosmic Surfer. Really iconic design for this character. This is Kirby. This is peak Kirby design. Like I said, this is about a three hour inking session. So glad it's done. And I was able to condense it down, hopefully, so that you can get the idea of all the different things going on at the same time, make it interesting for you guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for sticking around and liking and subscribing and commenting on these videos. I have so much fun making them. I'd like to make more, but they take a while to produce these, but I just want to say thank you guys for watching. If you found these helpful um, in terms of inspiring for you to ink your own stuff, to draw and ink your own things, that's great. Let me know below and subscribe. Thanks again for watching guys. And also let me know below in the comments which character you'd like to see me ink next. I might do a poll or I might just go ahead and ink it. Either way, leave me a comment below and I may or may not respond to you. I'll always, I'll always look at them and I might respond. I might give you a nod or a wink or something. We'll see. And keep an eye out for some other videos of tips and tricks and art techniques and tutorials, smaller stuff like that, as well as some original work that I want to show you inking and drawing and coloring as well. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And until next time, God bless.